The journey from the Black Myth Ukon was long and beautiful, but hard. I beat the game, but I still had no idea what was going on. So I decided to play again and watch the true ending at New Game Plus. After beating the game again and doing my own research, I now have a better understanding of Sun Wukong's life. So let me explain you the amazing life of Sun Wukong. Sun Wukong was a stone monkey born from a rock. He lived in Mount Huago as the king of monkeys. Later, Sun Wukong learned magic from this guy, someone we know as the keeper of the Black Mountain. With his amazing powers, Sun Wukong forced the King of Undersea Palace to give him a weapon and armors. That is where he got his magic stick and shiny armor. Satisfied, Sun Wukong returned to Mount Huago and the King of Undersea Palace reported Sun Wukong's crimes to the Jade Emperor, the ruler of the Celestial Court. Sun Wukong trained his monkeys and traveled around the world and became brothers with six notorious Yao Guai kings, including the Bu King. One day, Sun Wukong got drunk and fell asleep. While he was sleeping, his lifespan had reached the end and a Death Reaper came to collect his soul. At the underworld, Sun Wukong beat up the Death Reaper and caused havoc. He forced the underworld king to give him the Book of Life and Death. He then erased his name and names of his monkeys and Yao Guai brothers, making them immortal. The Jade Emperor was furious and wanted to punish Sun Wukong, but one of his men advised that it would be very difficult to subdue Sun Wukong for he is too strong, so it would be wiser to give him a fancy rank and make him work for the Celestial Court. Sun Wukong was given the rank Horse Protector and worked hard at first. But later, he learned that his rank was nothing but a stable boy. Sun Wukong caused havoc in the Celestial Court and returned to Mount Huago and named himself the Great Sage. Later, Sun Wukong stole Celestial Peaches from the Celestial Court and ate them. These peaches, they take from 3,000 to 9,000 years to ripe. Not only that, Sun Wukong ate all these fancy Celestial food prepared for a huge fast and ran away. This crime is bigger than it sounds. The Jade Emperor was furious, so he sent an army, but Sun Wukong fought back with his own army and won. This is where Erlang, the nephew of the Jade Emperor, came in as reinforcement. They were evenly matched, but Sun Wukong was beaten by Erlang's black dog and finally subdued. Sun Wukong was sentenced to death but there was no way to kill him. He knew too many magic, his body was too powerful, and he had erased his name from the Book of Life and Death. He was immortal to the next level. However, Sun Wukong could not defeat the Buddha himself, and he was sealed under the Five Elements Mountain. 500 years later, Sun Wukong was rescued by a monk named San Zhang and became his first disciple and journeyed to the west, which is India, to obtain sacred Buddhist scriptures. At first, Sun Wukong was out of control, so Guan Yin gave a circlet to monk San Zhang, which he then put on Wukong's head. This circlet is important. Sun Wukong could never take it off and it would squeeze the hell out of his head whenever he would misbehave. So, the journey to the west continued. Zhu Baji and Xia Ujing joined the journey along the way. The journey was successful. They brought the sacred Buddhist scriptures to China, and Sun Wukong earned the title, the Fighting Buddha, and his crimes were pardoned. Then, he returned to Mount Huago, where he wished to live freely with his monkey descendants. But the Celestial Court still saw him as a threat and attacked Mount Huago and his monkeys. Furious, Sun Wukong fought against the Celestial Army, but he was defeated by the Yaguais and Erlang, and died. As he died, his body was divided into six relics, and each Yaguai took one as a reward. Hundreds of years later, the Destined One was given the mission to collect all six relics to revive Sun Wukong. The Destined One defeated each Yao Guai and collected all relics, but Sun Wukong was completely dead and there was no way to resurrect him. The Destined One defeated the Anti-Shell of Sun Wukong 
took on the circlet and continued Sun Wukong's name. However, this is the bad ending. Putting back on the circlet means putting himself under the control of the Celestial Court again and repeating the cycle all over. So I started New Game Plus to fight all the secret bosses and get the true ending. As the Destined One defeated the secret bosses, Maitreya says, An old friend of Sun Wukong came to me, wanting some peace. I led him to the Great Pagoda. Have you paid him a visit? The Destined One was granted access to the Great Pagoda. Here, he meets Erlang and the two engage in a fierce battle. After the battle takes to the Kaizu level, Erlang is defeated and Sun Wukong's memory is unleashed from Erlang's eye. It is revealed that Sun Wukong wanted to take off this circlet and be free from the Celestial Court's control completely. However, he couldn't do that unless he was dead. So, he schemed with Erlang to kill his body. But hold on, why would Erlang help Sun Wukong? There are several possible reasons. First, Erlang was sick of his destiny being bound to the Celestial Court. Second, the Jade Emperor had once imprisoned Erlang's mother inside a mountain. He used this axe to cut the mountain and rescue his mother. And third, Erlang saw Sun Wukong as his equal and rival, and both grew a very unusual friendship. After killing Sun Wukong with other Yao Guais, Erlang hid himself inside the Great Pagoda and sent his brothers to test the Destined One's strength to see if he's worthy. White-clad noble, yellow-robed squire, green-capped martialist, venom Taoist, pale axe stalwart. These were the brothers sent by Erlang to test the Destined One's strength. After proving his strength by defeating Erlang, the Destined One finally inherited Sun Wukong's memory. Now that the Destined One has Sun Wukong's memory, he refused to wear the circlet after he defeated Sun Wukong's empty shell and finally became free. Completely free and whole, Sun Wukong now departs to fight the Celestial Court and defeat the Jade Emperor, thus making him the Black Myth. Because the Celestial Court represents white, and Sun Wukong is the sole warrior who faces them. So this was Sun Wukong's life based on the Chinese classic Journey to the West and the game Black Myth Wukong. I skipped a lot of details, so if you have anything to add or change, please comment down below so we all can check them out. If this video helped you in any way, please like and subscribe, they give me so much power, and good game YouTube! Good game.